14. And then finally, just while we're still here, um, we've got this data decimation in milliseconds. So um, data decimation, what it is, is um, it's, telling the, um, it's telling the MIDI output to only send out data every certain interval. So, obviously, um, so the data coming off the Eigenheart is very fast. Um, like it, can be, it can be quite a high rate, and some um, software, like a, if it's you know, CPU-intensive software, it can, um, it can have a bit of trouble um, coping with all this data. So what we can do is set the data decimation rate in milliseconds, and what that's telling it to do is, on this controller, it's only going to send out um, the information every certain time interval. So I've got my data decimation, well, it was at 10 before. If I put that at 100, um, you'll be able to hear, hopefully, um, if I go back to here, turn the volume up. Oh, no, it's being weird. Um, let me just delete this control. I've got the volume controlled. I'll uninvert it, put the bass at zero, it's a scale factor up. So hopefully. It's quite difficult to hear. I can just about hear it. I don't know what it's like through the internet, but you can. What's it meant to sound like? Basically, it's like stepping through. Instead of going, it's going. to hear. Okay. I should really put it on pitch instead. Hang on. Um, we'll put well, apparently, but they can hear it. They can hear it. <laughs> cool. Okay, so you get the idea anyway. So um, there's also, there's a global setting for that. So ne the next thing I'm going to show you, so this is the kind of, um, I think I've covered the basic kind of one, so I've got audio, MIDI output one just set to channel one. So this is the kind of basic settings to get, um, um, to get the various controllers sending out MIDI CCs on just one channel. Um, so what I'm going to do is, now I've done that, I'm going to move on to the multi-channel modes. This is where we can have polyphonic um, pitch bend, polyphonic controllers and stuff. Um, the first thing I want to show you though is there's this settings window up here. Um, if you go full screen, yeah. Um, so settings window. So this is a, a, new, a new thing as well. So global settings for, um, for MIDI output one or MIDI converter one, which is sending out MIDI output one. Um, and you can see there's a minimum data decimation. So this is like a global um, kind of throttling or what we were just looking at, but this works globally. So this would be the minimum, the minimum interval between um, each packet of data, I guess is what you'd say, or something like that. Um, so that's the global kind of data decimation. Now what we've got here, we've got this MIDI section. We can choose to, um, if we want to just send out controllers or just program changes or just some MIDI information other than actual <laughs> notes, we can untick this box and it will no longer send out the MIDI notes, just the whatever we put into this routine matrix. We can also turn off pitch bend now, which is quite useful. So we've got the send pitch bend tick box. So untick that and it won't do the pitch bend. Okay, now this, this is the next bit we need to look at. So I'm going to put it in polyphonic mode now. So this means that each, each note will be sent out a different MIDI channel. Um, okay, so what I need to do is at the moment you can see I'm set to channel one. I'm going to go in this box and I'm going to set it to poly. Okay. And so how poly mode works, um, you may have come across this before, but basically each new, each, each new note I press on the Eigenharp will be assigned to its own MIDI channel. Um, so the next, the next two things are minimum poly channel and maximum poly channel. So this is basically saying how many channels do you want to use for this? What's the maximum number of voices you're going to need? Um, this probably will come more clear in a second. I'm going to set it to four because it's easier to work with for now. So, so basically it will cycle through channels one to four. Every time I need pre press a new note, it will find the next available channel out of channels one to four and assign the MIDI channel to that note. Okay, so going back to main stage, what I've done in main stage is I've created a, uh, I've created a patch. I've got four keyboards. Each of these keyboards is responding to MIDI channels one, two, three, and four from Eigenlab's MIDI output one. And what I've done down here is I've created a track for each of those MIDI channels. Um, so uh, each of the, track one is responding to MIDI channel one, track two, MIDI channel two, etc. So now if I play my first note, you can see um, 
It's quiet, but you can see instrument one lights up. Second note, instrument track two. So you can see it's, it's basically assigning a new MIDI channel for each one. And what that means already is I can do um, polyphonic pitch bend. So I can play two notes. So we've already got um, polyphonic pitch bend per note, which is, which is cool. Um, but there's, there's a lot more we can do now with, um, with this new routine matrix, with this multi-channel stuff. Um, so the first thing I want to do is I'm going to take this one we were doing off earlier. Okay, so I'm gonna. So now, now we're we're um, into like polyphonic world. It's best to use things like the keys because obviously these are the truly polyphonic controllers on the eigenharp. Um, so the first thing I think we should look at would be um, uh, let, let's just do something with the pressure. So the the key pressure. I'm going to attach that to the cutoff of this sound, the cutoff frequency of this sound. So the first thing to do is put a tick. Um, click in the box where pressure meets. I'm going to do CC11, which is um, expression controller. So I'm going to click in there. Um, scale factor to one. So I just want it to behave normally, in fact. So scale factor to one, um, base to zero. I just want it to go positive range to be the full possible range. So my high, my base is at zero and high is at 100%. Um, I'll tick always return to origin. I suppose it always does with pressure. Um, data decimation, put that at zero. Okay, now this is the important bit, so the control scope. So first of all, I'm going to check per note instead of global. So global, um, if, if I'm in poly mode and I've got global ticked, it's going to send out the pressure on every single channel simultaneously. If I'm in um, just normal, if I, like before when I had MIDI channel 1 selected, in global mode, it's only going to send out the um, pressure on MIDI channel 1. Okay, so in poly mode, it will send on all channels. If you've got one channel selected, it will just send that one. Okay. Um, now this per note one, now I'm in poly note, now I'm in poly mode, as we just looked at, each new note gets sent out on a new MIDI channel. So this per note thing means that it will send out the MIDI CC on the, on the channel corresponding to whichever note you've pressed. So let's just do a demonstration of that. So um, I'll click OK, it's on per note. So let's go back to, um, to here. Uh, so I'm just gonna quickly, I'm just going to set this up. So I just, I'm using this Cypher plugin. It's quite cool. It's from F Expansion. Um, and it's just really it sounds quite nice, and it's easy to set up the MIDI. Okay, so um, first thing, press MIDI Learn. Click on here. I was doing aftertouch. Not that one. Um, one sec. Aha. Okay, I'm going to come to this stuff in a sec. I had aftertouch um, selected as well. Okay, so now back to Cypher. Um, okay, let's click MIDI Learn. Um, click on click on here, which is the. Come on. How do I cancel that? Clear Learn. Okay. Again. Oh, I know what's going on. Okay, so I'm not sending out the right because um, I've got on this this on poly mode. What's happening is um, it's not set, actually sending out on MIDI channel one, so that's why it's not receiving the data. So I'm just going to quickly go to the global settings and put it to channel one, just so I can do this MIDI learn quickly. So I've gone to global settings, put it on channel one, just so I know it's definitely sending the MIDI to channel one in main stage, just so I can do this learn thing. Um, so MIDI learn again, hopefully last time. So I press this and then press the key. Okay, there we go, number 11. So that's CC11 now is attached to the cutoff in here. Um, so now you can hear like, as I press the key in and out, it's, it's affecting the filter cutoff. I'll put the resonance up a bit. Okay, so now I've done that. I'm just gonna really quickly copy the settings across these other three ciphers I've got going on. Copy, paste, paste, paste. Okay, so now I've copied the same settings across to all four copies of this um, plugin that I've got going. Um, I'm going to go back to my, um, my settings here, um, maximum poly channel, put that back to poly mode. Oh no, sorry, that's the maximum one. Um, active MIDI channel, put that to poly. Okay, so now it's sending out on one to four again. 
Um, so what I can do is I can... Doesn't sound very... So I'm doing that, I'm not even letting go of the thing, I'm just controlling the, um, the cutoff with the pressure. I've got all four held down at the moment. But I can uh, vary the pressure on each key. And I can change that. So that could be done with the yaw or the roll of the keys. So, so that, I mean, that's quite, there's a lot that can be done with that. So that's the, uh, that's the per midi channel, per note thing. And also, of course, there's this fixed channel thing here. So I'm imagining, I haven't actually tried this, but I, I would have thought if you're in poly mode, you can tell it to just send out pressure on midi channel one or whichever channel you want. Um, so that, that's, all the, that's all the options in this, this window here.